Hello, and welcome to the Cook Memorial Public Library podcast. I'm your host, Nate Goss. In case you haven't heard, Aspen Drive Library's expansion project is now complete with 15,000 square feet of extra space, a new children's area and teen space, quiet reading room with fireplace, maker space, expanded study rooms and digital studios. The remodeled Aspen Drive Library is pretty much like a brand new library. We did a podcast episode back in June at the peak of construction, but now that the project is complete and patrons are finally getting a chance to live and breathe in the expanded space, we thought it would be a good time to have Library Director David Archer back for one last Aspen Expansion Project episode to talk about what it took to wrap this up and to promote some of the events and festivities we have planned around this exciting new space. So, Dave, welcome back to the podcast. Hey, thanks, Nate. Great to be here. So we had you on for the first time about this project in February of 2018 to announce, uh, basically to just announce it, that it was happening. So here we are. We're not even two years later, and the project is done. The architect's renderings have been realized, and it is uh, no longer just a theoretical plan. So I'm curious, what did it feel like to walk into this space, this building, that first day after everything had kind of been moved into place and to actually see this thing come to life? Well, I, I think it, it really came home for me when I got to see the, the kids uh, come into the library when we opened uh, for the very first time. And we get a lot of after-school kids at Aspen uh, who have really been looking forward to the uh, expanded space. And uh, just the look in their eyes when they mm-hmm. came in was all I needed to see. And, and I could have been one of those kids, frankly, just, yeah, just yeah. in awe of the space and really appreciating how beautiful it is. Yeah, I, I, was kind of, I think I was there, too, when, mm-hmm. when, or at least I was there the first week as they were coming in. And just it was almost like looks of awe, you know, like they were just so happy that we had, I think, maybe even thought of them, that they had a space of their own. Well, and, and I think they did appreciate the fact that we did think of them. Yeah. In fact, uh, as as uh, the, the previous podcasts have uh, indicated, that one of the main reasons uh, among several uh, for the expansion was to uh, better accommodate our after-school kids because we're right in the middle of a number of schools there on Aspen Drive uh, with the Hawthorne School District. A lot of kids have always visited the library there, and uh, uh, frankly, we, we've had shortages of space, uh, yeah. to, not only to accommodate them, but uh, for uh, adults as well. So uh, I think they were really excited about the space, and I know staff was too. Sure, and you know, I've had the opportunity to, to work a few reference desk shifts since we've been open, and it's nice to actually also on the flip side of that see some adults now enjoying the more quieter spaces right at the peak of those after school hours where that really was not possible before. Well, and I think that was one of the, the, the key uh, goals of the project is to expand the space but also to provide a separate spaces so that that people can use the library differently. So while the kids have uh, several different areas they can choose from, adults do too. And I think what was most noticeable during that first week is that kids would be congregating in one area and then across uh, the building there would be an area where adults could be hanging out and you couldn't even hear uh, the kids. And that wasn't the case in the previous building. No. The the noise traveled fairly considerably. Yeah, it seems like acoustically even it was really well thought out that way. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We've definitely already alluded to it, but just more generally speaking, do you have a sense of what the response from the community has been so far, the ones that have been able to stop in and visit? It, it's been very positive. And whenever I've talked with staff during that first week, you know, the response has been from patrons coming in that it's beautiful and, and better than they expected in the space. And a great compliment that I got was from someone who said that they couldn't even determine where uh, the new addition was mm. because it seems such an organic. Uh, the addition seems so organic yeah. that it, it seemed like it was a, a part of the original design. So we had a group of uh, local elected officials and stakeholders and former board members uh, see the building uh, last week. And uh, they were extremely impressed. Uh, the Village of Vernon Hills, which has been a great partner with us, uh, couldn't be uh, happier for, for the uh, the result. And I will say one of the best remarks I got from a patron, and I swear I'm not making this mm-hmm. up, <laughs> as they were looking around the mm-hmm. building and looking at the space, they were saying, this actually makes me proud to be a taxpayer. Wow. Can Fantastic. you believe that? That is, that is wonderful. Yeah, And, <laughs> you know, and, and I, I, I think uh, our, our citizens get great value from the library. Absolutely. And between yeah. the location, Libertyville and Vernon Hills, uh, and a great robust collection um, and uh, a project that was done uh, on time and under budget, I, I think our our, our, uh, our citizens, our taxpayers can be very proud of the project. Yeah, now you just said uh, on time and under budget. Now, because of that, 
even since our last podcast episode, which was in June, there were actually a few enhancements that were able to be made near the end of the project. Um, so do you want to maybe even just talk about what those were um, and, and, and maybe exactly why we were able to make that happen? Sure. So, so the project budget was $6.8 million, and that's something that, that the, the Library Board of Trustees had uh, identified prior to the project starting. Once it became clear that, that the project was coming in under budget, uh, we were able to add some additional enhancements that you mentioned. And one of them uh, is to add uh, uh, 12 additional uh, parking spaces on the north side of the building. You can never have enough parking. Sure. And yeah. this would position us for even future growth uh, down the road. Uh, we were able to do some enhanced landscaping. So those who have been to Aspen know that uh, that to the east of the building is the Victory Center and to the south uh, is the uh, Vernon Hills Park District at Sullivan Center uh, where there is a new kindergarten building being constructed uh, by uh, Hawthorne uh, District 73 School District. And so what we wanted to do is provide some additional landscaping. We added about 12 trees, added some lighted bollards along the sidewalk between the Victory Center and the library as well as two new benches. Uh, that's really going to beautify that area and really tie in all the adjacent properties mm-hmm, together. Mm-hmm. Uh, the board was also able to uh, add uh, a new checkout desk, so uh, a desk that is lower profile and more accessible for our patrons uh, that complements the new reference desk as well, so that it's a, it's a nice, very complementary of each other. Uh, we also do other things uh, like LED retrofits in some of the existing areas of the building, uh, which will save us money down the road. So those are just a handful of things that the board was able to do uh, because of the progress that the project had had gone had done up till that point. And and I think that those enhancements are all um, they they've all sort of been noticed. I think by the patrons Good. when they walk yep. in. Um, all right. So um, that's that's sort of uh, what we had to say about the building itself. But um, we've got some stuff planned coming up to sort of celebrate this whole thing. So do you want to maybe tell us a little bit about some of the events we have coming up uh, just down just just around the corner? Sure. Saturday, November twenty third at nine a.m. Uh, we'll have the official ribbon cutting. I might add the building's open right now. So of course, if you're listening yeah. to this. Prior to Saturday, November 23rd, come in and take a look. But we wanted to have a proper uh, ribbon cutting because uh, who can resist having a giant yeah. size uh, a pair of scissors <laughs> cutting actually, a ribbon? Do we have yeah. one? We'll have a giant size. I, I think size we have to rent one. Okay. So. <laughs> Uh, but uh, we'll have the official ribbon cutting at 9 a.m., and then we'll have a variety of activities throughout the day. What I'm most excited about are, are tours, so that uh, the variety of tours that, that, that people can take advantage of. At 9.30, the architects who designed the building uh, will be leading a tour uh, that's focusing more on the design elements of the building. Um, there will certainly be an opportunity to discuss uh, the purpose for each uh, area, but I think for those who want to get a feel for some of the nuts and bolts and the design influences uh, that the architects had in mind. This would be a great tour, mm-hmm. and, yeah. and I'm looking forward to, to attending that uh, tour at 9.30. And then at 10 a.m., and then every half hour on the half hour until 1 o'clock, uh, there'll be uh, tours of the library led by staff, and, and that's not only uh, public areas but also behind the scenes as well. And then two uh, Spanish language tours at 10.45 and 11.45, and then a Russian uh, language tour at 10.15 and 11.15. So we hope that folks can take advantage of that and and see parts of the library that they may not have seen before. Uh, We'll have special story times at 10 a.m. and 12 noon, and uh, there'll be refreshments uh, as well as little demos in our workshop and digital studio as Mm -hmm. well, and I think you're going to be there that day. Well, yeah, I'll be there kind of doing the digital studio stuff, which, um, you know, I don't know how much we've talked about that even in past Mm -hmm. episodes, but that's been expanded greatly. So now, the exact same services, uh, digital studio services that we have here at Cook Park are are mirrored at Aspen. So uh, we've got the vocal isolation booth and all that stuff there now too. So yeah, I'll be there doing talking about that kind of stuff. So very exciting. And it'll be indoors. We're not going to make you walk out and wait outside uh, <laughs> for, for, yeah. for uh, the Grand Poobahs to, right. uh, to, to cut the river. Yeah, because yeah. who knows, yeah. you know, what the weather's you – know, we've already got snow on the ground. Exactly. So, yeah, yep. who wants that? So I kind of want to just talk a little bit now, uh, since we have you, about – what is changing about your job now as library director? I imagine that in the lead up to this, uh, it was consuming a lot of what you were doing. And, you know, I guess I have to ask, uh, what are you doing with all that new free time? (laughs) (laughs) Well, first of all, uh, kudos to our staff because uh, uh, they did a tremendous job in ensuring that this project got done on time and open to the public because, uh, you know, without them, uh, you know, this, this certainly would have been possible. Uh, but in terms of, of, of my time now, you know, we're just finishing up the project, so there are still uh, little odds and ends. Um, 
you know, I mentioned the, the lighted uh, bollards uh, that, that light the pathway between the Victory Center and the library. Those were just recently installed, sure. yeah, so we yeah. have to oversee that. And now that the construction manager is not on site, you know, some of the some of the items that still need to be done uh, had to be facilitated by staff. And so I'm involved to that extent. But more or less, uh, you know, the, the time that is freer now is is devoted towards kind of looking ahead to see some of the, the next big things that the library will be undertaking. And that's our strategic plan, which uh, is due to be um, uh, evaluated. So in the very early stages of, of focusing on that and just things like performance evaluations yeah. and uh, and, and manager meetings and uh, figuring out, uh, you know, which repairs in our Cook Park building in Libertyville need right. to be yeah, looked, sure. looked at for the upcoming year because those sort of things don't go away. So, yeah, yeah. as you say, the, the everyday stuff that a director focuses on, none of which is the same from one day to the next. All right. Well, um, one of the li- things that we like to always do to kind of wrap up our interviews is to just ask, what have you been reading lately? Or we can even expand it to what have you been watching, listening to, reading, whatever you want to talk about. What have you well, been into? Yeah. So I, I, I'm, I think I've mentioned in previous podcast uh, interviews that uh, I'm a huge podcast listener. And, and uh, the one that, that, that I've been devouring over the past uh, couple weeks is the podcast Far From Home. The first season, at least, focuses on the on uh, uh, two brothers who uh, go on eleven thousand mile journey across uh, Europe and Asia on the Mongol Rally, which goes through a variety of different countries. and And there's it's more of a travel log that takes them from the UK all the way to Mongolia, and they'll go through a variety of different countries. There are certain uh, uh, rules of the rally in terms of the type of car you have. So hmm. this is not an easy journey because of the type of car that they have to use. But it's a great way to 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 go along on this journey with these two brothers and experience what they experienced on the road. Uh, some of which were really cool. Others were were a little bit uh, a little bit nerve wracking. Mm-hmm. So. As someone who I think uh, secretly wishes to do such a rally, uh, maybe in more comfort, uh, this was a great way for me to, to get a little bit yeah. of escapism. So v- it's far via from, proxy. Yeah. Uh, exactly. So far from home, the first season is the one that I had listened to and looking forward to the second season uh, as well on that podcast. Great. Yeah, we'll link to that in our show notes great. as well if anyone's interested in checking it Super. out. So, All right. Well, uh, Dave, it's been great checking in with you over the course of this entire project. And, uh, you know, we hope to have you on again, you know, for something entirely unrelated sometime soon. So looking thank, forward but, to that. But thank you for coming on. Thanks, yeah. Nate. All right. So we hope to see you at Aspen's grand opening. Again, that is Saturday, November 23rd. Details about the event along with pictures of the new space can be found on our website at cooklib.org slash Aspen. You can also find that link in this episode's show notes. And while you're on our website, be sure to stop by our Shelf Life blog, where we write book reviews, share local history, give genealogy tips, and so much more. That blog's address is shelflife.cooklib.org. Don't forget you can reach out and say hi anytime by sending us a message to webmaster at cooklib.org. And also, you can show your support by sharing the podcast with friends and family or consider leaving us a brief rating on Apple Podcasts. That's all for today, and we will be back soon. But until then, keep reading, keep watching, and keep listening.